good morning and welcome to our first online worship for 2022. And I wish you a very peaceful and contented year ahead. As a church, we follow on from Christmas with the celebration of Epiphany. And in this, we remember the arrival of the Magi or wise men who came to honour the Saviour. We don't know when they arrived, maybe weeks, maybe months, perhaps even a year or two after Jesus's birth. But they're a living example that God's friendship is not for a limited few, but for all who want to receive it. So let's begin in prayer together. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And those ancient scholars and travellers followed a light in the heavens in order to find the true light that was coming into the world. So let's ponder that as we listen and sing to an African song which celebrates God's people marching on towards that light.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. There are many myths and legends around the visit of the Magi after Jesus' birth. And those who want to challenge the Bible use them as an excuse for ignoring the event completely. So that does not get in the way. We'll have a quick look now at a few of the myths and conjectures that have developed. Firstly, what was the light in the sky? Was it a star? Was it two planets close together and bright in conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter? Was it a comet? Picture there of the comet that, kept, that arrived in 1997. Was it a supernova? That's a sun, that's a star many light years away exploding, which would be visible, but is very rare. Or was it Venus and Jupiter? Very bright and people can keep on discussing that and I find it fascinating. The other thing is, where did they come from? Here's a map of the Middle East. Um, and we know they came from the east, east of Bethlehem, so that gives us some idea they may have come from um, Persia, which is now Iraq and Iran. They may have come from um, Arabia or the Yemen. And it's good to, to again to discuss that, but we don't know. And uh, how many were there? How many wise men were there? Were there three? They four? <laughs> Who knows? Were there eight? Were there twelve? Were there sixteen? I'm back to the three. Well, no one knows because Matthew doesn't tell us in his gospel and clearly didn't see the need to tell us these things. Were they kings? As we see in the Nativity plays. There's no mention of that. And again, that's a myth, a legend that's grown up, and that's fine. But all Matthew tells us, Matthew calls them major, and all Matthew tells us is that they were scholars, learned people. So there you go, a few myths and legends around the major, which are interesting, but Matthew doesn't give as much detail. He said there were Magi and they were from the east and they came to worship a new king. Now kings and high authorities don't normally go to others. They expect others to come to them and that would be so with the, the Magi or wise men who had travelled so far. They came from the east as I've said, perhaps let's say near modern Baghdad. According to Google that's just under 13 hours in light traffic. Uh, had Google been around at the time it would have read 30 days assuming you don't get attacked by robbers. 
wise men from the east. They would have been used to people visiting them from all over to be consulted about many things, including the night sky and what it might be telling them. You have to know that in those days, this was before astronomy as a science and astrology as wishful thinking went known to be two completely different disciplines. What I'm saying is that for men of this renown and status to undertake this huge journey, not quite sure what lay ahead tells us why Matthew puts it in his gospel, because they were expecting to find something incredible. And God was clearly with them because when they did find what they were searching for, somehow they knew it. They just knew it. And yet they'd ended up at an ord visiting an ordinary little family in lodgings in Bethlehem. So they weren't only just clever scientific people, but they were full of faith. And they wanted to do the things of God, to know the things of God. The word epiphany itself, of course, means revelation. Now, there are many examples of epiphanies in our Bible, from the beginning of it to the end, from Abraham through the prophets to our wise men and beyond. In fact, the final book in the Bible is that amazing epiphany given to John, the writer of Revelation. The visit of the Magi is important and Matthew gives us few details except the ones we need to know that in Christ God was doing something new and that it was no longer for a chosen race or a few special people it was in fact for all the wise men represent that new phase in the plans of God And that ought to be a revelation to us. And let's take that into 2022. In fact, you know, every act of faith that bears fruit is revelation. Every prayer that's offered in the certainty that God is listening is a revelation. Every act of goodness done with God in mind is a revelation. Every piece of share, faith shared with another, every practical act for the strengthening of God's church, Every realisation of what God wants for us, every mistake rectified in the light of Christ's teaching, every moment spent reading God's word, every plea to the Holy Spirit for wisdom and help. The examples that I just gave and many, many more are places that we can go to to receive revelation. And remember, many small revelations add up as time goes on. Anyway, let's pray a while. Lord our God, as those wise men brought gold which sustained Jesus' family when they were refugees, we pray for the wealth of our planet. We pray for a proper and fair use of what the planet produces. Especially give grace to those who have little and generosity to those who have plenty. As those wise scholars brought frankincense used in worship, we pray for the church throughout the world that it may bring honour to you and witness to your great goodness. Keep it from being judgmental, we pray, and bless its many good works for those in need. And as those travellers brought myrrh, used in that time for medicinal purposes, especially as an analgesic. We pray for all in pain or distress today. May your Holy Spirit help bring better health in body, mind and spirit. And so we gather up together all our prayers, both those that I've just said and those that are, we've prayed quietly to ourselves as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. for whatever you may be doing this week and it's an old one based on one of St Patrick's and which we use at our weekly Zoom prayer meetings. Perhaps you'd like to join in and say it with me. Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ, Christ as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and on my right. This day be within and without me. 
lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. And may that be a huge encouragement to us all. And the blessing of God Almighty, the creator of all things, the light in a dark world, and the friend beside us each day, be with us and those we care about, this epiphany and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.